Hi, good morning. Autumn here with day two of a three-day free workshop entitled Doodling for Beginners. If you were able to join us yesterday, we created a pretty interesting and unique masterpiece. All of ours look a little different. We drew prompts and just doodled the best of our ability um, what the objects were. So if you have your sheet or if you watched the replay and created one, be sure to have that with you. But now if you're joining us today and you weren't here yesterday, um, all you really need is either a piece of paper or something like this. I made like a grid with 12 different spots because we're gonna explore with just black and white today. That's it, black and white patterns. And I've created 12 patterns. Um, some might be unique and some are kind of, you know, you've seen them before, um, that we're gonna just gonna practice. And the purpose of the black and white pattern is really simple. It's repetitive, it's the contrast of the color, so it's like satisfying to our brain. And there's unique opportunities to choose in these patterns of how exactly you want to create the pattern. So even though the pattern is kind of set, you get to bring your personality and your ideas to the pattern. All right, so we're gonna begin um, if you have your sheet or a blank sheet, you're going to want to look at the open areas. So there, I have like a flower. My sunflower has some petals that I could put designs on. I have some bigger ribbons. I have some segments. But I'm also going to look at just the white areas, right? Because also when we're creating a pattern, you want to make sure it fits your sensory system, that it's not so small, that it's stressing you. So make sure you have paper or the area you're going to use for the first pattern is large enough to feel good as you do it. So here's our first pattern. It is just parallel squiggle lines. Now on my sheet, I notice I have these ribbons I made and they already have this kind of line in it. So what I'm gonna do is just trace along my ribbons and make this design in a ribbon. So you could make a ribbon design like this and do it or you could just do it however you want. And feel free to choose the direction. Like, do you want to make it diagonal? Do you want to make them down? Do you want to make them across? Mine are naturally going diagonal. I'm using a Sharpie here. I'm just going to trace the pencil outline I had from yesterday and start to add my squiggles. Now, they're not going to be perfect. This is something else we talked about yesterday. Don't strive for perfection, just strive for creating. Have fun, do it to the best of your ability. They're not going to be perfectly, perfectly parallel because you're not a machine. Whoop, they're mine. And if they go unique, you know, I'll show you mine, you can see. Okay, yes, not perfect at all, but that's the pattern. So. That is pattern number one. So whenever you get finished with your pattern, um, and if you got, need a little bit more time, keep going, but I'm going to move on. And hopefully Liam is up. I have him set up to do some also with me towards the end. Okay, this pattern I created, I don't know if I've ever seen it before. I just call it a square with lines. So you can kind of tune into what design do you like best or do you like all of them? Do you want to mix them up in your little area? So pick an area or if you're just going to do, you know, your regular kind of square and just practice on a sheet of paper, decide what you're going to do first and just start making. And remember, you're doing this freehand, so your squares are probably not going to be perfect, perfect squares. Don't get a ruler. Don't do anything like that. Your line is just kind of separating them into equal parts. Okay, so there's the design option. And I'm gonna pick just a new segment here on my page to make this design. And I'm gonna actually kind of mark it off in a square looking thing. I'm gonna go ahead and make them all. So different um, lines going different directions. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. 
here. Let me move back a little bit. All right, here's my area right here. Mine are pretty small. What I want you to have at the end of this workshop is many different tools and ideas that you could return to when you want to do something relaxing and you're not quite sure what to do. Having just the prompt of the visuals we've created will give you a relaxing activity, right? Let's see. All right, so there are my little square and square patterns. Mine are going all different ways, all different directions. Okay. Okay. The next design I call interconnecting leaves. So you're going to start making one like oval kind of shaped leaf shape. And then just branch off from that one. And you'll see I kind of have one like hidden underneath and it's coming up. So just kind of creatively, like as you start to make it, where does the next one seem like it goes, right? Just tune into your intuition of what's next. You don't have to make it all uniform or exact. As you see, this looks a little bit like, you know, they're all different, they're all unique. So I think for that one, I might actually put it on a few of my sunflower because it just might look really cool because it's already a, like a petal shape. So I'm going to outline, let's see, make sure you can see this, maybe three of them. And this Sharpie is a little big, so I'm gonna to go to my little fine line here and make some interconnecting leaves. I try not to leave too much space like behind them if you can kind of connect them all, but it's perfectly okay if there's some space. You can even shade that in. We're gonna do some other ones that actually have like a background of contrast. So if you wanna shade a little bit of a background that might not have a leaf, I will show you that example. my leaf and leaf kind of design. I shaded a few of the areas at the edge that kind of felt like, you know, I couldn't fit a leaf in there. All right. So there's another idea. Okay, this one is super, super simple. Random arcs. Random arcs. But as you're creating this, your arcs are going to go in whatever way comes next as you start to create them. So you'll kind of feel like what should happen next. And I really want you to touch into this. Like part of the creation process is that tuning in of like, what wants to flow through me? How does this want to come? And it's not like it has to be um, a certain way, right? And we don't know what it's going to be until we start doing it. So until you make your first arc, you're not going to know the end result. And a lot of creativity is like that. We can get like bogged down, like thinking about the end product, but just start, just start your project and it'll keep going. So I'm going to do my arcs. Lee, you want to sit with here? And, or you can join me and do yours. He just woke up. So, okay, I'm going to do the, my arcs in my other rib, my ribbon. So I'm going to trace it. I'm still using my fine line because my Sharpie is just a little big for, for this one. All right, so arcs, how are they gonna look? Let 
This is something too, if you have children, you can sit down and create patterns together and say, all right, here's my pattern, here's my idea, what's your idea? And just kind of go back and forth creating different black and white patterns. There's a meditative art called Zentangle and they have a little bit of um, probably expansive ideas. You can always look up on the internet and get other black and white ideas. So there's my interconnecting arcs. Look like little uh, <laughs> worms, <laughs> right? All right, that's a simple one. All right, this one I've never seen used as a pattern. And I, I thought it came to me this morning and I was like, Morse code. Look at how awesome. Morse code is just lines and dots in all different random orders because each different pattern corresponds to a different letter. Now, I have no idea what this says. I just kind of like randomly made it. You could, if you wanted to create your art, you could actually write out your name or something in Morse code and put that into your artwork. Wouldn't that be cool? This is just super random. And I have some segments on my, we made these segments yesterday. So I think I'm gonna do one on each of my Morse code. And then you just kind of decide what looks good. It's going to be a, a little rectangle followed by a dot or vice versa or whatever pattern. Now, if you're working on a very small area like me, you have less options. But if you're working on a bigger area, you can definitely explore. So there's my first one. You can see that there's a Morse code right in the center there. All right, I'm gonna do another one on the other segment. It's educational too, right? You could actually teach your child, like let's write your name in Morse code. This is a very, very archaic way of communication before cell phones and before other technology. I was telling my daughter this morning when I was making the little example, she was like, what's Morse code? I was like, okay, we should have that discussion since you're 16. All right. There is my oh, other one. Hi, good morning. Yes. There's my boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Liam, you want to draw the next one for me from my list here? Come here. This one's pretty cool. This one's going to require you shading in more of a background. Here, just pick that one up for me. And you want to hold it for the camera? All right, this is simple. It's called bubbles, okay? But the idea is that the background is black. What you're gonna do for this one though is you're gonna draw your bubbles first, draw your different shape circles, and you can decide, do you want them all uniform? Do you want your bubbles to be all, you know, just like a circle pattern? Or like me, I did small, big, medium, large, all different. So you're gonna pick your area and you're going to draw the circles first and then shade the background. And it looks like to me, I think my a big sunflower should have some more design on it. So I'm going to do that. Maybe three more. And if you're just practicing on a blank sheet of paper, we would love to see your creations afterwards. You're welcome to post them or send them to me privately. And I post them together so we can celebrate all our uniqueness and our time, taking time for ourselves and just tapping into our own creativity. Also, some an idea for any of you who have children, if you are making a present or a gift for someone, um, having your child create art is a wonderful, unique gift you can give them and you could have them if they're not sure what to make. Let's do black and white patterns. Let's make something really cool or a greeting card with it. 
So lots of ways to engage kids. And bring out the kid in yourself, right? All right, so my bubbles are like really small in there, but they're there. So yeah, the bigger you make them, you gotta remember um, black seems to overwhelm, right? So big bubbles kind of with the background is kind of cool. All right, that's bubbles. Maybe I'll do bubbles somewhere else just so I can do it practice the bigger technique. I'm going to do it in one of my segments. Make sure I make them big. I think also I'm using my Sharpie, which when you go to make a bubble, the outline itself makes it smaller than you think. So I'm going to put one on each of my segments that I got here just to practice that bubble in a little bigger form. Now the other option would be that your bubbles are colored in and your background is dots. So just like polka dots, but different. But I thought we'd do this a little unique because everyone does polka dots. So there's the one I just made there with a little bit more practice. I was able to make my bubbles a little bigger, show up a little bit more. Okay, next one. This is perfect for Halloween time. I call this either eyeballs or olives, okay? Because they're all different ways. So there could be a, a thing of olives that you dropped open, right? They don't have to be eyeballs. But since it's Halloween, we could say, woo, we're making eyeballs. Oh, I'm so excited that Emily and Brooklyn are joining. Okay, awesome. All right, Emily, you'll have to tell me what does uh, Brooklyn consider these, eyeballs or olives? I'm curious. Okay, I'm gonna make a whole new area for my eyeballs. Over here, I'm back to using my thin marker. And I'm making the, the circles as much as the same shape as I can. But if you can't, if they're a little different, that's fine too. Because if they were olives or eyeballs, they're not always uniform, exactly the same. So what I'll do first is just make all the circles. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Random circles. So here's where your intuition comes in. What comes next? Where should it go? Should some be a little closer? Some be a little farther away? Make it completely unique, completely an expression of you. And then now for the eyeball part, it's just gonna be a little half circle. And I'm gonna do it all different various directions. So it's like a, a spilled ball of eyeball, a spilled cup of eyeballs. I could have two like looking at each other kind of in a goofy way. I'll show you that one. All right, two more. All right, there's all my goofy eyeballs. So you see how these ones are kind of looking at each other? So you could play around with that. Look, this is like, they're all looking at each other. <laughs> okay, so have fun with the eyeballs. I'm gonna do one more eyeballs. Um, maybe in one of my, we made teardrops yesterday. So I'm gonna go ahead and outline a teardrop and add some eyeballs to it. <laughs> there there's my teardrop now it's unique with eyeballs all right cool squiggles from the iris would look more like i like she said so you know what do it whatever if brooklyn wants to try that try whatever else comes to you so kind of take my idea but then branch off of it so 
if she wants to make some squiggles and make it like the like little red veins, right? Go ahead. Let's let's do that. I, Brooklyn, I'm taking your idea. I'm making eyeballs. My squiggles are just really random. I'll be excited to see your squiggles. Okay. I want to know what Brooklyn thinks of this. Does that look better? Does that look like a spooky Halloween <laughs> image? There we go. Eyeballs. They kind of look like they could be pumpkins too, you know? Well, depends on how you make a pumpkin, but the, the lines remind me of that. All right, so I love that. Like take, let that creativity flow. That's the idea. These are patterns, but there's many options within patterns of how you can branch out and allow that creativity to flow. Because I tell you what, the more creative I feel we are in life, the more creative we are when struggles happen, when conflicts happen, when unpredictable circumstances arise, practicing your creativity overflows into all of your life. So here's a simple way, right? You're having fun practicing your creativity. You don't even know that you're like stretching yourself and really preparing yourself for the future. All right, everybody loves a leopard pattern. Here's a leopard pattern. When you start this, you just kind of make them odd shapes, amoeba shapes, they don't have to be you know, any perfect, perfect circle, and they just kind of go together in any kind of like pattern. So there's only a little bit of white in between there. So I think I still have some spots on my flower, but this needs like a good display. So I'm going to make a whole new square for it, and I'm going to use my dark Sharpie, my big Sharpie, because I am going to make it circular too. All right, and then just start making your amoeba shapes, coloring them in, branching them off. Let's see, can you see Maya? Okay, Emily said she lost a little connection, but the replay will be available. So if you miss any part of this workshop, you can watch the replay. So maybe when you're doing this kind of activity, you put on really relaxing music that just really soothes you. Like I've got playing, I've got relaxing music playing here and then Liam's playing some other things in there. But it is cool to just take this time for yourself, right? If you can create just letting yourself have that break from life, doing something fun and different. Maybe you even want to make a little doodling journal for yourself. Have a little notebook that you can return to anytime you're feeling that need to just self-regulate through art. And you just pull your little doodling notebook out and you doodle a pattern or an idea that comes to you. There's so many ways we can take care of our, our sensory needs these days that sometimes we forget. You know, I think also with winter coming, we're not gonna be able to get out of the house as much. That's a big um, regulation tool for me is taking walks and hikes, but I'll have to find something else. If we can only do that, we're still gonna do it. Like we're still gonna, I've intended this year, we're still going to walk, even if it's a little chilly, like around the street or the neighborhood because it's good for us. But I'll need something else to kind of regulate my system. I'll need something indoors at times and this will satisfy a visual need like for me, even greater than watching TV or something. When I'm creating art, I feel like I get visually just grounded, right? And there's a repetition about this black and white thing that can be relaxing too. Many of us who have children with autism 
know that repetition is one of their go-tos to regulate and relax. And all, all humans actually use different tools like that of repetition. You're just not always aware of what you're repeating that's actually relaxing for you. But repeating a pattern is definitely one way to proactively help yourself relax. And like I said before, it doesn't matter what you create. It's not for anyone's eyes necessarily, but you. Your artwork is perfect. Whatever you create is a reflection of the perfection of you. I love the water ambience. Oh yeah, my fish tank. Yeah, that's the filter. So we're always gonna have that and I put some music on. So yeah, my glowfish, they've been trekking for a whole year. We haven't killed this batch. So <laughs> we are very proud of ourselves. Okay, moving on to the next shape, the next design. This is a darkened background with just different shapes with speckles inside. So you can decide what you want to do. You could stick with one. I, I put the basic shapes in here, right? Triangle, circle, oval, square, rectangles. You can stick with one or you can combine all of them. And it's almost gonna be like the bubble, like the bubble technique. We're gonna create the shapes first, put the speckles in and then do the back background. So I think I'm gonna do this on some of my um, segments with my small pen because I can tell I'm gonna need that. So I'm gonna do one with just circles, with speckles. You could imagine these as cookies with sprinkles, right? Perhaps all different cookie shapes. All right, so there's my first one right there. And I'm gonna do another one, mixing them all up. So I'm gonna do the square, maybe three of them, because there's five. I'm gonna do square, ovals, and triangles. I probably can fit two a piece in here. And probably uh, two speckles. This is pretty tiny. And I'm gonna use my black Sharpie around because it's a little easier than using a fine line. Just be careful as you use Sharpie as it does stain, go, can go through or can stain things, but alcohol is the removal anecdote of Sharpie. Okay, mine was pretty tiny once again. Pretty small, but there's my shapes with speckles and a black background. So I'm gonna do something one more, maybe on a, let's see. I have a lily I made yesterday. So I'm gonna do a lily leaf with just the triangles as speckles. And I should use this thing for the dots, okay. Okay, once again, my darkness kind of consumed. <laughs> so you gotta remember to make your shapes a little bigger then you think you need because that Sharpie outline takes away part of the space. All right. All right, when you're ready, we'll move on. We only have three more, believe it or not. Hearts. Here's the, the style with the blackened hearts or here's with the white with the black background. Maybe you wanna try both and see what you're more comfortable with. I got a little annoyed by making my dark backgrounds right now, so I think I'm gonna do this one. 
I have a palm tree here that has nothing on it. So I think it needs a heart pattern. You could also make a big heart and then put a pattern of hearts inside of it. And this, when you're, when you're doodling hearts, definitely gets you into the energy of love, right? Self-love, compassion, acceptance. You can kind of channel all those kind of positive feelings while you're doodling art or hearts. So here's my hearts. Maybe I give myself some positive affirmations as I'm doing this. Autumn, you're so brave and courageous, teaching a workshop, going live. I'm very proud of you. You're taking care of yourself by engaging in activities that relax you. You are worth your time and attention. Your body deserves a break. <laughs> so, right, just love on yourself when you're creating hearts. Here's my, my loving palm tree. I'm actually just going to trace the bottom of this because it looked kind of weird without the pattern all the way through. The next pattern is actually a checker, which kind of matches what I'm creating here in my palm tree. But there. Okay, so my intuition said, make that palm tree pop out. So I made it pop out. <clears throat> All right. We did hearts. Okay, we got two left. I think we're going to go ahead and do the checkered pattern. Now, this is a regular checkered pattern, and we did that yesterday. So I actually have two different ones. I can simply, it's hard to do this with this way, that right there that I can simply just shade in since I did that, or I can create something new somewhere else on my sheet. And if you're joining in for the first time, you're gonna wanna create a square and do horizontal and vertical lines. Now remember, if you're doing this freehand, you don't need a, a ruler or anything like that. They're not gonna be perfectly, perfectly uniform. That's okay. Um, and the idea with the checkered is you're gonna do, a, you know, black, white, black, white, black, white. That's the pattern as you go down and it does help best to focus on a line at a time because I notice sometimes I'll start to try to make it across and I'll mess up my checkered pattern. <laughs> so focusing on each of your line going down, alternating usually works the best. Now this one is my unique, looks like um, a quilt maybe, a unique quilt with all different shapes. So I just made my lines just, you know, not perfectly same distance. So I might make this pattern since that's more unique and I already have the checkered pattern I could trace here. So I'm gonna find a whole, a different spot to make this, I'm gonna keep with this one, this checkered pattern. So my first two lines are gonna be a little separate, then I'm gonna do closer, then separate, then separate, then closer, then separate. And I'm just gonna alternate what I'm doing up here And make that a very unique pattern. Okay. And when you're making one of these patterns, you're most likely going to have things that go off the edges, and that's fine. If you want to make a true square, by all means, go ahead and do that. That just seems extra tedious for me, so I'm not going to do that. So then I'm going to start, and I'm going to probably use my bigger one now. I'm going to feel kind of into which spot I should start with and make that checkered pattern. If you are shading with a Sharpie, it is good to outline and then go to the inward. It helps you stay in the lines. But just be very gracious with yourself if you go out lines or feel like you messed something up. You can always just kind of form it into something else, right? Put a heart on it. Whatever. Don't don't be too hard on yourself. We talked yesterday about not bringing the, the energy of judgment 
to your artwork. There is no right or wrong. It's just an expression. So mine looks pretty interesting. Okay, make sure I do this right. Or I mean following the pattern. <laughs> All right, so then we've got you. These are a little trickier when you're doing the different shapes because you're used to coloring in the same size and all of a sudden it challenges you because like, no, the next one would be the tiny one. But, ooh, I'm really proud of this. When I show you guys, you're gonna love it. All right. I think I did that right. At least following the pattern. There's my unique checkered pattern. You see how this has like an, a cross or an X with the white and this is a cross with the dark. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> All right. Last but not least. It is just a simple cityscape. So for a cityscape, you're just drawing rectangles in a row. Um, I'm not putting in the little lines or anything to look like windows, but you could do that if you wanted to make something a little bit more detailed. Um, I'm just going to use the rectangles, all different shapes, and the back night sky. So I'm going to figure out where do I need my cityscape. I think up high looks really good. I might make two of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a bigger square first. So let's see, we'll go all the way up, over, down, and my bottom is actually curved. So I'm gonna go ahead and curve it. And then just start making the rectangles that come to me. This is where it's a pattern, but you decide what comes next, right? Is it a small one? Is it a big one? You're tuning into these little, little nuances, but this is teaching you about intuition at the same time. The little choices you make in art are the same things you do in life sometimes when you make a little different of a choice and you feel that little different leading in a different direction. So I want you to t touch into that and pay attention to that. Where are you being nudged as you create? What is the next thing that is asking to come through. Now I'm just going to shade in my night sky. Now if your, if your city um, were real close to each other, it could look like books, right? So there's an option of making a cityscape or a bookcase. Maybe you look like you're like, oh, these are very similar, not too much different in height. There's a bookcase. Okay, so there's my cityscape. I'm going to make one more somewhere else on my page, maybe down here. So I'm going to have to actually make, ooh, now I have a curved, curved upward part. Okay. Okay, so there's the start of it. I've made my buildings and I have a sky and now I shade in my sky with my black. You could also make an upside down cityscape. So think about that. Turn your page and make something. I have an idea. What if we made um, an upside down and a right side up kind of right next to me get together in the same thing. See, once you start creating, there's no telling what else will happen. So up here, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make a, almost like a mirrored image, but I don't, I can't guarantee they're gonna be mirrored images. <laughs> Let's see, so we're gonna go one, two, 
three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so see what next came through? What little image? And then the middle is what I'm gonna shade in, right? So there's a mirrored cityscape, but not perfectly mirrored. But you could make it perfectly mirrored if you tried to match up your shape across from each other. And like I said, you could also put little dots on your buildings that would serve as lights. Okay, so there is my doodled. I've got three of them on here. Cityscape here, cityscape here, and a cityscape, bleh, cityscape there. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Okay, so now this artwork has these 12 different representations of doodle ideas on it. And tomorrow, if you don't have this artwork yet, but you have, you created something on your, on your sheet, Bring that with you tomorrow and colored pencils because tomorrow is going to be creativity with color. So we tackled the creativity with doodling freehand and today was black design. Tomorrow will be color. That'll be awesome. Now, if you don't have colored pencils, you can bring markers. It's okay. But colored pencils are awesome because we're going to do some shading techniques. All right. So I'm very proud of my work. I hope you're proud of your work. You guys are welcome to uh, send me a picture of what you created if you're comfortable with it. Um, I'm sure it'll be the uniqueness um, of you, which is so awesome. And I hope you feel this is a regulation tool that you can return to and use anytime um, proactively or in the moment when you're feeling stressed, right? There's something about just getting grounded with our bodies, visual and creating that can really, really serve us. So. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, what I'm going to do with these live uh, workshop is it will be available for one week. So anyone can access it. And after that, it will become a little package for sale through my studio. So I'm excited to be able to teach these once a month and then have a package that someone can purchase afterwards for just $9. So anyways, thanks to you guys for joining and I'll talk with you soon.